the beginning, the earth was dark and void of light. Then God created light and said, it is good. And then through our human choices, we chose to be like God. And darkness entered the world once again. Then God came to the world in the person of Jesus the Christ. And light was again born into the world. And the people did not like the light. So they tried in vain to put out the light of God in the world. But they could not. Jesus Christ, light of the world, has come this day. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. Happy Easter. Now that doesn't sound very happy. Let's try this once again. Happy Easter. There we go. Now we're rolling, as they say. Now you're cooking with gas. I welcome you to our sunrise service this morning. As you have already seen, we started out this morning in darkness, but now the light has come. And so through the rest of this day, we remember the light and sing God's praise. Praise God, light has come, morning has broken, and the tomb is empty. This morning we will hear the story of the Easter proclamation from Luke's gospel chapter 24 verses 1 through 12 if you want to follow along you're more than encouraged to do that on page 1642 of your pew bible hear the resurrection story on the first day of the week very early in the morning the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb they found the stone rolled away from the tomb but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood before them. In, the, in their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in, that while he was still with you in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. When they remembered, then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. This is the Easter word for Easter people. Thanks be to God. You may be seated this morning.
pray with me, please? Good morning, Lord Jesus, risen Christ. We come to your open tomb, your empty tomb this morning, amazed at what we have found. We thank you for your light, which has triumphed over the darkness, triumphed over death, triumph even over our own evil. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being loosed again in the world. We greet you on this happy morning, and we ask that you would enlighten us to the story of your resurrecting. Make it be for us a sign of hope and joy. This we ask in your name. Amen. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I love Luke's account of the resurrection. And want to know why? Oh, thank you. See, I'm going to keep you awake. Because it has women in it. Not woman, women. I love the fact that there are a gaggle of chicks. Can chicks be in a gaggle? Sure they can. If you've ever been around more than two women, you know it's a gaggle, right? Luke records not one, not two, not three, but a whole group of women coming that very first Easter morning. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other women. This was an event to be discovered by a whole raft of people all at one time. This is not a person-to-person -person event like it is in John or maybe a, a one or two kind of visitation in Matthew. No, no, not for Luke. For Luke, it's all in, everyone in, but the kitchen sink. These women come bearing their spices so that they might anoint their Lord. And when they get there, they find people stramble, uh, they find the tomb opened, opened. There's no need to wonder about where the stone was gonna be rolled away or not. It is completely open. And I love the fact that when they get there, and find this stone gone, this huge, monstrous stone rolled away. They don't even hesitate. Not like some of the other Gospels. No, no, Luke has the women going right on in. It's kind of like that, that next door neighbor that never knocks. They just barge right on in. The audacity of these women, they're not afraid. They're not even the least bit put out by this event. They're all in. They're all in. And when they get in to the open tomb, they find nothing. Not a thing. As a matter of fact, again, unlike other gospels, there's no grave clothes lying here or there. Uh, there's simply nothing there. Their first reaction, another thing I love about Luke, their first reaction is not fear at all. It's instead confusion. Now, I can understand this, can't you? If I buried someone I loved and went the next day to the cemetery just to pause for a few moments at their grave site, and I get there and I see that all of that earth which I knew had been put over that casket. I saw it perhaps being put there. I saw the baskets of flowers being poured all over top. And now everything looks like it's been thrown helter skelter. My first reaction might not be fear, it might be, huh? What happened? What's this all about? Why, what? You know, that's, that's natural, isn't it? That's Luke, that's Luke. So these women at the empty tomb, no hesitation, no fear, until the angels show up. That's when the fear comes. 
So these women were not afraid of death. I don't think they were even afraid of resurrection. They were afraid of God's messengers on earth. Every time in scriptures that, that messengers of God, that angelos, that angels show up, they're going to bring a message, sometimes a good one, sometimes not such a good one. And so to see two of them in clothes dazzling white is another way for the women to know that God is present. And a word is going to be coming to them. The angels tell the women, why? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Great question, isn't it, for this Easter sunrise service? Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Now, in other Gospels, the women process this information differently. Some kind of go away sorrowful. Some ponder and then they go and, and they tell the story to the disciples. But not Luke. Another reason to love Luke. Luke has the angels delivering an even greater message to the women. Listen again to these words. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day raised again. The angels, in effect, tell them the whole story of the salvation saving work of Jesus Christ. And then the kicker is their reaction to this. How do they receive this news? There's one simple sentence. Then they remembered his words. It was as if that little moment of teaching, that little memory jogger on those women was like the light bulb coming on in a cartoon on a Saturday morning. Bing! That's right. We remember it. We remember what he said. I love the fact that the women got it. They got it. That's the last thing that the angels tell those women. So what do you do with that information? When you get it. The women left. They left, they went back home, they told the 11, and all of the people that they knew, he is risen. He's risen. Again, unlike any other gospel, the angels didn't tell the women, go, tell my brothers. Go, tell everyone you meet. The women understood the real meaning of he is risen. They understood the great joy of this day. They got it and they couldn't contain it. They had to tell. <laughs> I think that's pretty womanlike, don't you women? You ever have a juicy piece of information? How long does it stay in your mind before you have to share it? About 10 seconds for me. That's about all the longer a good secret or a good juicy piece of, dare I say, gossip stays in me. I just can't, I can't wait to tell. Somebody's got to know what I know. And so these women leave this tomb exuberant, not because they were told to, but because they wanted to share the good news. When they get back home, when they get back to that upper room where all of the men folk were hanging out, <laughs> there's this great line. It's, it's, it's recorded in two different ways, uh, both, of them, both of them whom I think is, are pretty strong, amazing ways. 
But Luke records in the NIV, which is in your pew, he says that, that the, men, the men seemed it, to, it seemed to them like nonsense. In other words, the men didn't believe, did they? In the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, it says that the men thought it an idle tale. They thought the women were pulling their legs. Surely, you know, you goofy women don't know what you're talking about. Surely, you're just, you know, making up stories. Surely, Jesus would not raise and, and have you be the first people to know about it. Surely it would be one of us pious and holy men who have been with him for three years. Surely you're lying. Hmm. All save one. Peter gets off his duff. That, that little spark of what if they're right? What if this is not an idle tale? Maybe I should go check it out for myself. He goes to the empty tomb and he finds nothing. And he goes back thinking, I think they might be right. I think they might be right. I think Jesus might have raised from the dead. I think this is not an idle tale. My question to you this morning, friends, you've gotten up early to get here. And I know that Donna's cooking's good, but I hope that's not the only reason you're here. I hope that you came this morning because you needed to hear the message that he is risen. He's no longer here. I hope this morning that you came to this place not expecting an idle tale, but expecting the good news of the resurrection. The question I pose to you this morning is, do you believe these women? And I'm going to let you pause for that just a second. And then I'm going to ask you again, and I want you to respond. Do you Believe these women. Do you believe Jesus Christ has been raised? Will you go and tell, even though there will be some who think your tale to be idle nonsense? I pray so. I pray so. Without these women, we would not be here this morning. These women who did not hesitate. These women who had no fear. These women who believed when the Spirit of God reminded them of Jesus' promise that he, would be die, that he would die and would be crucified and would rise on the third day. These women who didn't have to be told to share the good news of the resurrection they just went. They were like the Nike ad. Just go for it. I pray this morning that we are like those women. We've seen the light. We've seen the angels. We've heard the message. Now let's go and tell. Let's pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the witness of these women, for their just openness, Lord, to your guiding hand, to your word, to your message, to your rising. Help us be like them in all ways. Amen. You know, we get a lot of benefits, don't we, brothers and sisters? that Jesus was not there.